Hey guys, hope you're all doing well. Now for today's video, we're going to be discussing a dinosaur that has some interesting history with InGen. Jurassic Park 3 introduced us to a small selection of dinos that were illegally cloned after the events of the Lost World. And one of those animals happens to be the subject of today's video. This herbivore has been heavily debated in recent years for reasons that are quite intriguing, especially since its first on-screen appearance happens to be very minor in relation to many of the other creatures that the company cloned. This is one of the more recognizable hadrosaurs from the Cretaceous period. The animal paleontologists have named the Helmet Lizard. Corythosaurus was a member of the Hadrosauridae family and was named by Barnum Brown in 1914. Discovered by Brown in the Red Deer River of Canada three years prior, the dinosaur was documented as being not only lucky enough to have most of its skeleton fossilized, but it was also noted as having good skin impressions surviving alongside it, making it quite the important find for early 20th century paleontology. Now, of course, the most noteworthy attribute of the animal has to be its prominent head crest, which is remarkably similar to something that we might see in a bird like the cassowary in the modern day. Most of this crest is made up of the creature's nasals, and its mouth narrows down into a much more subdued design than what one may initially expect. An interesting bit of information concerning the Corythosaurus crests is the popular belief that this head ornamentation would have helped the dinosaurs emit loud and powerful sounds. Like many of their relatives, these animals are thought to have had the ability to produce low-pitched sounds through their nasal passages, giving them unique and possibly even beautiful noises in the prehistoric era. Some paleontologists have even suggested that this may have sounded like a wind or brass instrument, such as the trombone. Corythosaurus are believed to have started growing this impressive crest when they were around half the size of a full-grown adult. They grew to approximately 30 feet long and probably weighed on average a total of 3 to 4 tons. During its time in the Mesozoic, it would have shared the earth with creatures like the Gorgosaurus, Parasaurolophus, and possibly even Chasmosaurus. The remains are found throughout the upper section of what is known as the Dinosaur Park Formation. And it is here where scientists have learned that these creatures typically coexisted with other giant herbivorous dinosaurs like Ceratopsians, Ankylosaurids, and of course their fellow Hadrosaurs. Unfortunately, 75 million years ago, the creature would fall into extinction. But, after engine scientists were able to uncover fossilized mosquitoes with their DNA, they were successfully able to create their very own genetically engineered Corythosaurs. <laughs> Jurassic Park's Corythosaurus were bred on Isla Sorna in 1999. They appear proudly on Engine's original list dating back to the early 90s. After the amusement park failed, the company had a good 97% of its genome mapped and ready to be cloned. However, no animals were said to be active and living on the island during the events of the Lost World in 1997. Still, if you're really vigilant, you can see that the Corythosaurus is easily spotted on a sheet of paper that's being held by the engine vet during the Pachycephalosaurus scene. Two years later, after the events of the second movie, a group of covert scientists made their way back to Site B in order to initiate plans for Jurassic Park's second iteration which would ultimately become Jurassic World. This is where that 97% of DNA was finally put to good use, and why we see a large group of the animals mingling with the Parasaurolophus during Jurassic Park 3. Now, due to the fact that this dinosaur was cloned after Hammond set up Site B as a biological preserve, its creation is deemed both illegal by the United States government, and it is also an event that may have had something to do with the destabilization of Isla Sorna's ecosystems that took place in the 2000s. During the one scene that we get to view them in the whole film series, the dinosaurs are shown to have pale tan underbellies and a very bright yellow back. Black spots and lines adorn their skin, while a big red crest sits on top of their hadrosaurian heads. In the movie, they're said to be about 13 feet tall and around 23 feet long, making them a bit smaller than their real-life counterparts. As far as I can tell, it looks like their wrists are pronated, which is a standard of most of the animals that Engine cloned during their time. Due to the fact that these animals have been featured very rarely in the film series, we really have only one brief canon scene of them all running around in the background as a means to compare them with their fossilized counterparts. So, while I'm sure that more differences can in fact be made, at such a quick glance, 
They appear to be just rather typical of a Jurassic Park created dinosaur. As far as we know, none of these guys survived the destruction of Isla Nublar in Fallen Kingdom, and it's currently unknown as to what happened to the herds that lived on Isla Sorna, but I wouldn't be surprised if we somehow got to see it pop up again briefly in Jurassic World 3. Now, I'm curious to hear what all of you guys think about this dinosaur. What was your reaction to seeing it briefly in JP3? And do you think it should get a bigger role in the next film? Whatever your thoughts and opinions happen to be, I'd love to hear them in the comments down below. Now before I go, I'd like to thank all of my game wardens, as well as all of my engine executives. I'd also like to thank all of my park workers and engine hunters as well. Guys, it seriously means the world to me that you all even continue to watch these videos. And I want to thank each and every one of you for all of your continued support. Now, I'd like to thank all of you for watching this video and hope you all enjoy today's content. If you feel like I deserve it, I'd appreciate the like and hope that you'll consider subscribing if you're interested in hearing from me again. I'll see you on the next one, guys. And as always, take it easy.